Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you, the organizers, for the opportunity to speak in this seminar. And yeah, as I said, I'm going to talk about direct degeneration from partial flag varieties and how we can uh, effectively construct them with matching fields and how the, these different matching fields are related using this tool of combinatorial mutations. And this is joint work with Oliver Clark and my supervisor, Batman Mamadi. So the outline of the talk, um, I'm going to start with some preliminaries. So what are toric degenerations, why we care about toric degenerations, and then we are going to see the objects that we want to uh, consider that are Grasmanian and flat varieties. And then we are going to see how we can construct toric degenerations from tropical geometry. And in the end, we're going to see this construction via matching fields and combinatorial mutations. Okay, so let's start. Um, so a toric degeneration, uh, we fix a variety X that we want to study. And a toric degeneration is a flat family of varieties such that every, uh, over the affine line, uh, such that uh, every fiber is isomorphic to the variety X, uh, and the fiber over zero is a toric variety. So why do we care about toric degeneration? Um, the reason is that uh, since this family is flat, uh, it preserves many properties of the variety X. So if we want to study a variety X, uh, we can study its invariance, for example, is Hilbert series from each fiber in the toric degeneration. In particular, we can study it from the toric fiber. And as we know, toric varieties have a very large uh, dictionary between varieties and combinatorial structures. So we can use this combinatorial structure of toric varieties to study the original variety X. And uh, toric degenerations have been studied in many different uh, fields of geometry, and uh, we can construct them in many different ways. And in particular, as I uh, mentioned before, today we are going to see how to construct them using some methods from topical geometry. Okay, uh, so today we are interested in uh, Grasmanian and partial flag varieties. So just a brief recall, uh, Grasmanian is the variety of k-dimensional linear subspaces in an n-dimensional uh, vector space. A flag variety, a so-called complete flag variety is uh, just a variety of flags, which means that we take a subset from zero dimensional to n dimensional subset of uh, an n dimensional vector space that are all contained in one another. And uh, we can, of course, embed the flag variety in a product of Grassmannian, sending each uh, vector subspace into the corresponding Grassmannian. And more in general, we can consider partial flag varieties where we just take subs uh, subspaces of a given dimension. And this is like the most general object in this class. Note that if we take uh, the uh, subset i of n to be just one singleton, then we get that the partial flag variety is just a Grassmannian. If we take it to be the whole uh, um, subset one to n, we get the complete flag variety. Okay, um, how can we, what coordinates does the Grassmannian have? It has the so-called Plucker coordinates, and which means that we can embed it in a, a n over k minus one uh, dimensional projective space, sending each coordinate to a determinant of, um, of a minor of a corresponding uh, matrix of uh, variables. And uh, if we take the kernel of this map, we get uh, the Plucker ideal, which is the ideal defining the Grassmannian inside of the projective space. And we can do the same for partial flag varieties, just by taking the embedding inside the product of Grassmannians and then sending each Grassmannian into projective spaces via the Plucker embedding. Okay, so now let's see how we can actually construct these toric generations. A very classical way to construct these toric generations is via the so-called Grobner degenerations. Um, 
So what are these Rabner degeneration? We can take an ideal I, which is an homogeneous ideal in the variable of sex zero up to Xn. And we take a weight, which is an N plus one tuple of uh, real numbers. And then we can define the ideal, the initial ideal of I, which is the ideal generated by all the initial forms of F for every F in the ideal. And uh, the initial form of F is just the sum over the monomial of the polynomial where the weight achieves its minimum, yeah, achieves its minimum color product with that uh, exponent of the monomial. So let's see a quick example. If we take this F, which is uh, the, okay, in this case, this will be the uh, polynomial polynomial defining the Grassmannian true four, um, but for now it is just a polynomial. So we can take, for example, the first weight, which is one, zero, 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 one. And then we have that the uh, minimum is achieved by the terms one, three, and two, four, where this is uh, um, zero plus uh, zero, and also by, by one, four, two, three, which is zero plus zero. And instead in one, two, three, four, we would get one plus one, which is three. If we take another weight, then we get that the initial uh, term of this uh, polynomial is just one monomial. So if we have fixed such a weight, then we have our uh, ideal and we have our initial ideal with respect to that weight. And it is possible to generate a flat family over the fine line that goes from the in from our ideal i to the initial ideal i. And um, when is this going to be a toric degeneration? We need the, the special fiber to be a toric ideal. So if uh, my initial ideal with respect to the fixed weight is a toric ideal, then we have a toric degeneration. Um, just to recall that a toric ideal is just a binomial and prime ideal. So now we want to see how to select weight so that the initial ideal is going to be binomial and prime. Okay. So first of all, how are these weights um, going to be, let's say, um, going to be in, in the space Rm plus one where we select them? Uh, they're going to have a specific combinatorial structure, which is a fan structure. And this uh, fan is called Grobner fan. So the Grobner fan of an ideal is just uh, uh, the fan where two weights in Rm plus one lie in the same cone, if and only if they give the, they give the same initial ideal. And uh, of course, not every point in the Grobner fan gives a toric generation, as we saw before, we can have that the initial term is just one monomial. And in general, this is true. So if we just choose a random weight in R plus one, then it will probably give a, it will probably give rise to an initial ideal, which is a monomial ideal. But we want our ideal to be binomial. So we want to, rest to restrict only to the cones where um, the initial ideal contains no monomial. Okay, so let's see again the example of the Grassmannian true four. Uh, this is generated by this polynomial, which is our Plucker idea. And uh, in this case, the Grobner fan consists of seven cones. So we have three two-dimensional cones where the initial term is going to be just one monomial. We have three one-dimensional cones where um, the initial term is going to be a binomial. And then we have the origin where we have we get that the initial term is just the original uh, polynomial. And as we saw before, here, if we take a random point in this fan, uh, then the initial term is going to be a monomial. So we want to restrict to the weights where the minimum of, of the uh, terms of, of uh, the polynomial F uh, color product with W is achieved at least twice. And this is exactly one of the definitions of the tropicalization of a variety. So it's, 
it's possible to define the tropicalization of X in many ways. But one uh, of these ways is by taking the intersection overall uh, the F in the ideal of a weight where the, this minimum, this same minimum, is achieved at least twice. So for Grassmannian 2 4, we already saw that uh, we have uh, that this minimum is achieved twice in the one dimensional cones, and this is going to be the tropicalization of our variety. Okay, but uh, we need the initial ideal to be binomial and prime. So now we restrict it to the cones which gives a, give us a binomial ideal, and we also want it to be prime. So this is a, a condition that we can give on tropical cones, and uh, these are going to be called uh, prime cones. So we have our tropicalization, and then we have that maybe some of the cones are prime, and the prime cones will give us a toric degener uh, yeah, toric degeneration. So we have a polytope associated to each cone. And uh, what we want to do in the rest of the talk is see how we can construct such polytopes and how these polytopes are related between each other. So the idea that one might have is that, okay, we know that uh, mm, we can just take a weight in the tropicalization of the variety and get a toric uh, degeneration. But the problem is that uh, computing weights in top dimensional cones in the tropicalization of a variety is a non trivial um, thing to do uh, because the tropicalization of this variety gets very big very easily. Uh, for example, we see that already for Grassmannian 3.7. We have uh, 252,000 maximal cones. Then we can take the modulo symmetry. So we get only 125 of, and of these 125 cones. 69 will give us uh, non isomorphic toric degeneration. For the flag variety, something uh, similar. Uh, I mean, we get something similar. We have 536 cones modulo of the action of the symmetric group. And uh, of this, uh, just 180 gave us toric degeneration. OK, so we want to see how we can combinatorially or computationally construct weights in such a top dimensional cone um, without actually computing the whole tropicalization of the variety. Are there questions? Okay, if not, I'm going to continue. So uh, the idea on how to construct uh, such toric degenerations is to use a combinatorial tool, which is called the matching field. So a matching field for the Grassmannian KN is a map which associates to each uh, K, K, K subset of a set one to N, a permutation on k elements, so an element of Sk. And uh, of course, we can generalize this to the flag variety or to the partial flag variety by sending uh, each uh, set in our uh, domain of the variety, let's say. So it's subset of n of the right cardinality to uh, a permutation of that cardinality. And we say that a matching field is coherent if uh, it is somehow induced by a matrix. So if we can find a matrix, which is an n minus one times n matrix, such that for every subset, the permutation that we get is uh, what gives us the minimum term in the let's say, determinant of the corresponding minor. So if we have a subset, for example, uh, of cardinality K, we take uh, the, sub the sub matrix of that matrix M, which is uh, in the columns labeled by I and in the first K rows, and we take the determinant of this, and each uh, somehow uh, permutation gives us a term in the determinant, and we want to see 
which permutation gives us the minimum one. And we want this minimum to be assigned at a, at a unique uh, permutation. So if we have a coherent matching field, we get a lot of combinatorial information from it. So we can take uh, a weight vector, which is this minimum term in the uh, determinant, of, determinant of a corresponding minor that I was talking about before. And uh, then we have a polytop, which is the which is going to be the convex style of the um, indicating vector of uh, the matching field. So of how we uh, define the matching field. And um, these polytops, um, so we can define them for Grassmannian. We can also define them for flat varieties. But what is possible to prove is that the, for a partial flat variety on the subset I, the uh, matching field polytope associated to the matching field for the flat variety is going to be the Minkowski sum of the uh, matching field polytope for the corresponding Grassmannians. And also one thing that we want to check when we are dealing with polytopes in toric geometry is that the polytope is normal. And this is just a matter of computations, but it's possible to prove that uh, these matching field polytopes are in fact normal. Okay. So let's see an example of how this works. We have a matching field on the Grassmannian true form, which is defined by the following matrix. The one thing we have to check is that uh, the minimum in each minor is attained just once, but uh, this is easy to see because all of the coordinates in the second row are distinct. And then we have a weight vector. So this is going to be labeled by 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 2, 3, 2, 4, 3, 4. So for example, for 1, 2, we see that it's 2 because it, we have one term which is 0 plus 2, and the other term is going to be four plus zero. So uh, the minimum one is two and the same holds for the rest. We have that here the minimum is three, here the minimum is one and so on. And the polytope is going to be the convex out. So for one, two, we want to take the coordinates of where we have this minimum achieved. So we are going to take zero plus two. So we have a one and a one and so on. So for example, if we take two, three, then the minimum is going to be achieved by zero plus two. So we get a one and a one in this position. And we take the convex out of all of these points. Of course, if we have a weight vector and we are doing Grobner degeneration, what we are going to do is we are going to take the initial ideal with, resp with respect to this weight vector. So if we do it for the um, Looker ideal of the Grassmannian 2 4, we get the initial ideal is going to be um, is going to be a, a binomial ideal. In general, the uh, initial ideal is going to be a binomial ideal, but it might not be prime. Uh, so how can we check if this uh, ideal is going to be prime or not? Well, we can construct a toric degeneration from a matching field also in a different way. Um, so if we have our matching field lambda, we can define a monomial map, which uh, sends each Plucker coordinate to the monomial um, of a determinant where the minimum is achieved, or um, essentially to the monomial labeled by uh, the permutation lambda of i. And uh, if we take the kernel of such a map, then this is going to be a binomial and prime ideal because the map is a monomial map. And uh, in general, it's always true that the initial ideal with respect to the weight vector of a matching field is contained in the uh, kernel of such a map. And it's also possible to see that uh, the initial ideal is going to be a prime ideal if and only if the equality holds. So we want to see uh, when it is possible to prove that this equality holds. Um, 
Another thing to check is uh, what is the toric degeneration defined by the kernel of such a map? So what is the corresponding toric variety? And it's possible to prove that uh, the toric variety uh, corresponding to the kernel of a map is going to be exactly the variety defined by the polytope of the matching field lambda. Okay, so now how do all of these things relate? Uh, the first theorem that we're going to see is this. So if we have a matching field lambda for our partial flag variety, and we have that uh, the polytope of the matching field the lambda is combinatorial mutation equivalent to the galvan zetlin polytope, then lambda is going to give uh, rise to a toric degeneration of a partial flag variety. So in this theorem, there are a lot of words that I've never said before. So now we're going to introduce them. The first one is the combinatorial mutation. The combinatorial mutations were introduced in the study of uh, FANO varieties uh, in order to classify them. And they were introduced somehow in the dual lattice with respect to the one that I'm going to see. So for me, uh, a combinatorial mutation is going to be in the lattice M, where we have our polytope uh, P lambda. And we want to fix a primitive vector in such a in such a lattice and uh, an orthogonal lattice polytope in the dual lattice. If we have such data, we can define a tropical map, uh, which sends S to uh, a quantity, which is the minimum of a scalar product times our uh, primitive vector W. And uh, um, we say that this tropical map defines a combinatorial mutation of a lattice polytope P if the image of such a polytope is convex. Okay. And the second word that I'm going to introduce in this theorem is the Gelfand Zetlin polytope. So the Gelfand Zetlin polytope has many, many different uh, definitions, but uh, in this context, with this notation, we can define it as the polytope associated to the matching field, which associates to each subset the identity permutation. Okay, so uh, let's see how we can prove this theorem, like a brief idea of the proof of this theorem. So um, we have that uh, um, it's a well known fact. But the Gelfand Zetlin polytope is a toric degeneration of a partial flag variety. And uh, as I said in the beginning, toric degeneration preserves the Hilbert function. So the Hilbert function of my flag variety is going to be the same as the Hilbert function defined by the uh, Gelfand Zetlin polytope. Since this Gelfand Zetlin polytope is a normal polytope, then this Hilbert function is going to be equal to the Erhard polynomial of the polytope which is a polynomial that essentially counts how many lattice points are in each uh, um, multiple of the polytope. Uh, here we use another fact, that is that combinatorial mutation preserves many uh, properties of polytopes, among which also the Herval polynomial. So if two polytopes are combinatorial mutation equivalent, we are going to have the same Herval polytope, and uh, we get this equality. And in the end, again, since we said that this polytope is normal, we have that uh, uh, her, her polynomial is equal to the Hilbert function of the uh, corresponding toric variety, which is the variety defined by the kernel of the monomial map. On the other hand, if we have a Grobner degeneration, also Grobner degenerations preserve the Hilbert functions. So, the Hilbert function of the flag variety is going to be equal to the Hilbert function of the uh, initial ideal with respect to the weight. But now we have uh, two ideas which are one contained in the other and have the same Hilbert function, so it follows that they're actually equal, and uh, the initial ideal in particular is toric. Okay. So, what do we want to do now if we want to actually? construct a, a family of toric degeneration of the flag variety. 
We want to construct matching pairs which are combinatorial and nutrition equivalent to our alpha z polytope. And uh, uh, so we now introduce this family, which is a family of matching pair labeled um, over the uh, permutations of n elements. And it is the matching field associated to the matrix where we have zero in the first row. The second row has uh, essentially the elements of our of our permutation. And from the third row on, they're just big elements, meaning that we don't care about their order. They're always going to be older. So the only thing that can happen is that the first two coordinates are swapped. And in this notation, the Galfan Zetlin polytope is going to be the polytope associated to the uh, permutation that goes that sends one to n, two to n minus one, and so on, uh, up to two and one. Okay, so um, now we see which of these polytopes are uh, going to be combinatorial mutation equivalent to um, our Gelfand Zetlin polytope. So if we have a permutation, and this permutation avoids the patterns 4, 1, 2, 3, 3, 1, 2, 4, 1, 4, 2, 3, and 1, 3, 2, 4, so it satisfies some combinatorial result, then uh, the polytope associated to the matching field defined by sigma is going to be combinatorial mutation equivalent to the Gelfand Zetlin polytope. So here, what do we mean for a um, permutation to avoid certain patterns? It means that uh, there is not a subset of the index where we see this pattern. Okay. Uh, again, just a brief idea of the proof. Since we saw that uh, the um, the the polytope associated to matching fields of partial flag varieties is going to be the Minkowski sum of polytopes of the matching field associated to the corresponding Grismanians. We just need to prove a theorem for the Grismanian, and then we need to prove that it expands uh, nicely uh, via Minkowski sums. So we consider it for Grismanians, and uh, we want to construct a sequence of combinatorial mutation that sends our sigma to the permutation n and minus one up to one, which is exactly our Gelfand Zetlin polytope. And each of these uh, uh, permutations is going to different just by a, a swap of two elements, two consecutive elements. So let's see an example of how this actually works. Uh, so let's consider this uh, sigma which is 6, 2, 3, 5, 4, 1. And we want to construct uh, combinatorial mutations from our sigma to, uh, to uh, the polytope, uh, to the Galfand Zetlin polytope. So we start from the rightmost element, which is not in the right place, which in this case is 4, and we want to um, take down the value. So we swap it with 3. And then again, we take three and we swap it with two. And then one and two are in the right place. So we want to put here three and we start by putting four instead of five. And again, three instead of four. And in the end, we just want to swap five and four and we get the uh, permutation six, five, four, three, two, one. So one question that uh, you might have is what happens when the permutation are has these patterns inside. Why does it not work? Um, so what happens is that uh, the combinatorial mutation that we would apply for, uh, um, for the other permutation is not going to be convex. So we have to construct different combinatorial mutation. So we can consider this example. Here we have sigma, which is 6, 2, 4, 3, 5, 1. And notice that in this index indices, it contains one, uh, three to four, which is one of the forbidden pattern. So if we, if we follow this sequence of combinatorial mutations as before, we want to construct a mutation from P sigma to P tau, where we swap 
uh, four and five. And it is not possible to do it in one step, but it is possible to somehow mutate our polytope and then do a combinatorial mutation and then mutate it back. So uh, notice that if we do the combinatorial mutation with respect to minus W, then this is the same as doing the inverse of the mutation with respect to W. And the interesting thing to notice in this, uh, in this construction is that uh, the polytope that we obtain after two mutations is not a lattice polytope. So uh, it has one more vertex uh, with respect to the polytope specific line for tau, which is not a lattice point, but it is uh, one half the sum of two lattice points. And uh, in this case, it is possible to show like by computations that uh, this polytope corresponds to the so-called hexagonal cone in the tropicalization of the Grossmannian 3.6, or um, just in general, it is, um, it is a point in a non-prime cone in, uh, in the Grossmannian 3.6. So if we just take um, a polytope corresponding to the non-prime cone in the Grossmannian, then this is going to have a smaller volume. So we somehow need to add this rational point to for it to have it the right volume. Um, so the question is, does this construction work for other um, permutations that contain forbidden patterns? Or can we generalize it to higher growth manion? This is still not clear. So we see that here uh, we have to for to pass from sigma to tau, we have to go through a non-prime cone. So in general, we may ask ourselves, maybe uh, we cannot go through these uh, permutations because we have to go through some cones which are not even uh, in the tropicalization. So we have to somehow jump more than one um, between adjacent, adjacent cones in, uh, in the tropicalization. Okay, uh, combinatorially, what do we get uh, um, from this matching field? So uh, we can somehow generalize these matching fields by multiplying the second row by a scalar, and uh, we can compute all the historic degenerations using Macaulay and Polymake and check how many we get. So for uh, for the Gasmanian, the maximum that we have uh, in terms of uh, the tropic, the computation of the tropical uh, variety is Grasmanian 3.7. And uh, in the case of Grasmanian 3.7, as I said before, there are 69 possible toric degenerations. And uh, with this kind of matching fields, we get 40 of them. Uh, but for Grasmanian 3.6, we get all of the possible uh, toric degenerations that we can get for the possible non isomorphic toric degeneration. And again, for the flag variety, we get uh, all of the possible toric degeneration, but uh, as soon as we go to the uh, flag, five flag variety, we get only 22 out of 118. Um, so if you want to know more about all of this computation, there is a big table in this paper, which is on the archive. And we also see how like uh, other uh, combinatorial um, polytopes that have been constructed to construct toric degeneration, such as the FFLV polytopes and the S, S polytopes are related to our uh, matching fields polytopes. So um, what are the open problems in this, in this, um, in this area? Uh, so it is still not clear when we do combinatorial mutation if we can only move between cones that are adjacent. So it means that if we can only move between cones that share a one dimension, a co-dimension one uh, facet, and or if we move only along cones that are somehow facet of a maximal cone in the Grobner fan. And if so, how can we go to non-adjacent cone? How can we describe the other toric degenerations 
um, are there other uh, yeah, matching fields that we can label with other combinatorial object uh, that will help us describe uh, this other uh, cones in the trophy phase of channel variety. And yeah, I went a bit fast, but <laughs> that's all that I wanted to say. Thank you for the attention.